What's up, everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at this. This is the NIV Grace and Truth Study Bible put out by Zondervan and Al Mohler. I'm super excited to be uh, showing you this Bible. We've been waiting for it to come out for a while. Hey, for those of you that are new here, my name is Steve. While you're here, you're going to be encouraged and equipped to be the Christians you claim to be. We're going to do that by going through scripture and solid tools and resources to help make your day-to-day -day better and more Christ-focused. If that sounds like something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. All right, so the NIV Grace and Truth Study Bible, the general editor of this is none other than Dr. Al Mohler, Dr. Albert Mohler. <clears throat> you might recognize his name from his daily, uh, at least Monday through Friday, daily podcast, The Briefing. If you're not familiar with that, get familiar with that. Uh, it is a fantastic resource for news coming from a Christian perspective and what's really going on in the world. So I highly recommend that resource, Doctor. I'm a, we're always sad during, I think it's July. He shuts down during July and it's sad um, because it's about a 20-minute podcast and, and Dr. Moeller is a fantastic theologian uh, who really is eloquent about the way he talks about what's going on in the world. He also is the president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. And when this was coming out, I read a quote by him that says it's essentially it's designed to, quote, keep you in the text and give you all you need to understand the text, unquote. My understanding is that he put this Bible out, the Grace and Truth Study Bible, especially in the New International Version, which if you know Al Mohler, he's a NASB guy, uh, for, uh, if I remember correctly. He put it out in the NIV because the NIV is very accessible especially to newer and the newest of Christians. And this study Bible is designed to help guide them in the truth. Um, and so it doesn't get too, too deep, uh, what I would maybe call difficultly deep um, in explanations of scriptures. It's designed to be able to bring, bring you in and help you understand what's going on. Um, again, even, even if you're the newest of Christian and don't quite speak all that Christianese yet. So I'm excited to show you this Bible and I'm excited to read through it myself. Um, it comes in this clamshell box. There's a little bit of damage that has nothing to do with Zondervan. Uh, that just has to do with the UPS guy who like dropped it on my porch, but I like clamshell boxes. I do keep my boxes now. I might've said something different in the past, uh, because some Bibles just, Either A, stay in the box a long time and it really helps, or B, um, you want to transport them, you move your stuff around. So there's the ISBN. It retails for $79.99. I say this a lot. You can always find it for less expensive than that. That's the retail price on the box. So check Amazon. There will be a link down in the description. Even uh, when, at the time of filming, Christmas, the holidays are coming up, and uh, Christian Book always has lots of good sales around holidays. This is the Navy soft, um, this is, or sorry, the Navy leather soft version, and it's pretty. This is one of the, one of the most visually pretty Bibles that I own personally. Those of you guys who know me know I'm colorblind, um, so a lot of that gets taken with a grain of salt. I see colors differently than you do, but man, do, do I like how they designed this. Um, the, this gold here, a lot of this gold is like, you know, it, the, this is stamped in and then all around it, we have stitching and this stitching, I just like it. I, I don't have better words to say other than it's very visually stimulating to me and I appreciate that they did it. Um, I like, believe it or not, I like it when I hold it, that it's there. It kind of gives me something to grip, but I really like the, the colors of uh, blue and gold together on the spine. Uh, sorry, NIV Grace and Truth Study Bible, and then NIV and the Zondervan logo. And there is a gold art gilding. And we get two ribbons. Thank you for that. The two ribbons match. They're on the small side, but you know what? The fact that they gave me more than one, I'm not going to complain about the thickness of the ribbons. You guys know, if you're familiar with the channel, that I love my ribbons. Um, I prefer, especially in a Bible that's this thick, man, I could get six ribbons in here. I don't know if I need six, but I like four. I think four is my, my magic number. So let's take a look on the inside. Um, oh, the grain is very nice. Even though it's leather soft and the grain is like stamped in there, you still can feel it. And I appreciate that. I feel like the leather soft and the fake leathers, 
um, have gotten a whole lot better over the years. There are many cover options, way more than I can just list talking to you right here. So there will be a link to Zondervan's page um, in the description. Uh, lots of different cover styles and colors, and even Spanish. Uh, it's, it's out in Spanish. So we have a paste down liner, which is pretty typical, and a presentation page right up front. Fill this presentation page out. I don't care if you're giving it to somebody, fill it out for them. Um, if it's for you, fill it out. Somebody in 100 or 150 years is going to want to know who you were. You can even flip the page and write your kids' names and dates and your marriages and the deaths in your family. It's a great family legacy to pass down. I certainly hope my kids want my Bibles when I'm no longer here. Um, and it's a great thing to have. All right, so we have all our legal information there. There's a ton of it. I will point out because a lot of people ask, it's printed in China. And we get to the table of contents. So the table of contents on a typical study Bible, I always say is slightly more important than just in a regular reference Bible. And that's because you're getting a lot more than the 66 books of the canon. Now in this Bible, it's a little different. There are not a ton of extra articles, say uh, in the NIV study Bible, there's articles and charts like all over the place and you gotta have that stuff written down and you wouldn't be able to, to find it. Um, but there are some things that you need to know about. We'll show you what's in the front here. Um, and most what you're getting is the commentary, uh, which again is, is a great resource to have. So you're gonna get the, the 66 books of the canon in alphabetical order. Some abbreviations and transliterations, uh, especially abbreviations of books. Uh, if you get stuck, <laughs> um, you know, in the references and stuff like that, uh, you know, it might be helpful to flip back so you can see those things. Then you're gonna get a quick start guide. I'm calling this quick start guide um, kind of like a how to, how to use, <laughs> which is, it's nice. It's not specifically a how to use section. Um, but that's what it does is tell you about the book introductions and I'll lift it up. You guys can maybe even pause that and read it. Um, if you can in the video, if you, if you want to read what that is, but it tells you about the book introductions, how those work. It tells you about, um, cross-reference system and the study notes. Okay. It, it's how to use it. Do you want to know all those things as you're going through? So you're not missing some features and aspects of your Bible that you didn't know were there. And then you're gonna get an introduction and these things are, I think they're important to read through at least once just cause they're good. It's like the preface to a book. You can't start a book without reading the preface. So this is an introduction um, written by Dr. Moeller about the Grace and Truth Study Bible. It's not about the, the New International Version proper. It's about this particular study Bible. So you wanna know why he wrote it and what, what his thoughts and ideas were when they were putting this project together. There's of course acknowledgements because a project like this comes with lots of people and lots of help. And here you have those people. Lists of editors and contributors. And I love when they include these. Most study Bibles that are big full size study Bibles include this. So you're gonna get a lot of um, Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. Again, Al Moeller is the chief uh, or the general editor. And you're gonna go through, um, I'll lift it up here. Is they're gonna give you a snap, not a snapshot, of every book of the Bible, who wrote the commentary? Who are your commentators, your exegetes, your theologians, whichever word you want to use? Who are those people? And uh, what you know? What are their basic credentials? Why do they get to comment on the Word of God? And if you like, I use this all the time. If you like kind of what somebody's saying, say you're reading through Jude, and you kind of like the commentary, it makes sense to you. Look this guy up, Matthew Harmon. Right? Look him up. See if he's writ written any other books you might want to read. And then you're going to get to the preface. So the preface is the preface to the, the New International Version. Um, and that's specific to the actual text of Scripture. And this is uh, our translation philosophy. Okay, The textual criticism, if you will, uh, the footnotes, the formatting, um, why they, they translated things they translated. Because in the New International Version, it's, like, it's what's known as a dynamic... Uh, equivalent, which means that the theologians that have translated it from Greek or Hebrew have done some of the work for us with really difficult phrases that really don't have an English equivalent. All right, so it is a Smith's own binding. 
Uh, so it, it will last and last and last, and you can eventually get it rebound if you want. The typeset is 2K Denmark. I've said this the last couple of videos. Most of the Bibles I've been getting recently, the typeset is 2K Denmark. Um, and I love 2K Denmark. They do a fantastic job. So we'll point out a couple of things here um, that I'm really excited about. So first of all, this is a nine-point font. The actual text of Scripture is a nine-point font. It is paragraph format, as you can see. Dual column, paragraph format. Your reference suite is down the middle. The commentary on the bottom. And some pages are different than other. Let's see if I can. Here we go. See this big old fat, you know, area of commentary. And some is a little less. And you have references and footnotes. Um, so that's how the basic Bible is laid out. As I looked at this Bible and opened it and flipped through it, especially the more I flipped through it um, and read it, this gold makes me very happy. <laughs> I'm just going to word it that way. It stands out. I think that it's really pretty. Um, it, and I just really appreciate it. The lines are gold that separates the area. It makes it very easy to distinguish. And although you can't tell now, maybe when I lift it up, see the little reference numbers here? They're gold. Uh, so a little bit easier to see as you're searching through your references, going from book to book. Uh, and I really appreciate that. I think that it's beautiful. I think that they did a great job. What I don't have is more cover options to show you and compare. So if you have one of these Bibles and say a premium um, and a premium cover or a different color uh, than blue than I have, let me know if you are getting the same exact thing because I'm really curious because I really like this gold. I like how it's set. So as we continue to flip here, um, you, you do get a margin. It's not enough room for you writers out there who like journal in your Bible. It's not enough room for that. But there's room for notes. Uh, or if you have a symbol system like I do, you could put that in there. And certainly there's, um, you'd be fine highlighting and underlining. So it is line matched. Most Bibles that come out these days are. Uh, and if you're not familiar with what that means, it just means it's hard to show on the camera. It just means that the line behind it matches up exactly with the line in front of it. And it really helps to the ease and pleasure of reading. Um, yeah, you, oh, so you do get book intros. I talked a little bit about the, the book intros or when we looked at the how-to section. Before we get into those, I want to show you, this is one of my favorite sections to use. Good old Isaiah or Jeremiah works too, and here's why. Because I can show you in one page, poetic setting, right next to just the normal paragraph format setting, just so you can see the difference um, and what you like or don't like. I just reviewed the last Bible I reviewed, that King James Version vintage series, didn't have a poetic setting. Um, so, you know, that, that might be something for you. So let's flip open to, uh, since we're here in Isaiah, let's go to the beginning of Isaiah. And I just want to show you, I really like these book intros. They're different. And here's what I mean by different. Um, it's not typical, you know, who wrote this, when did they write it? Just, you know, very reference style book intros. I like that kind of a book intro because I want to know that information, but I read through a couple of these and it's written. This is the best way that I can put it that hopefully people will understand. It's written like your pastor is sitting there explaining to you, uh, what's going on in the book of Isaiah. Uh, and I really appreciate that because it's, it's a little bit different. I get a little bit different of a take from these book intros um, than, I, than I do from just your typical, you know, here's, here's the facts, here's the outline, let's move on. Both have their place. I just really like that Al Mohler took the time to do this. And once again, I think that it really goes to back up the fact that this is written to be accessible even to the newest of Christian. All right, so we'll take a look here at the uh, red letter setting. I mentioned this from time to time. Uh, different people have different red letter issues, whether you like it or don't like it. Um, but this red letter does stand out to me. I can see the actual uh, red letters, which sometimes you can't. Um, again, in reference to that King James Version Bible, which is a very nice Bible, uh, I, I just, because I'm colorblind, the red doesn't pop out enough for me to see. So it's something that I like to mention for you guys if you have trouble with, um, with red. The notes on the bottom, although I don't know the exact number, they look like they're about a six to seven point font. So let's, uh, as we flip open to the back here, if you're getting value out of this video, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up for me. 
And what we come to is the concordance. Okay, so you have a table of weights and measures. You always have like a one page of that. This concordance is massive. Uh, I think that it's the biggest, and I'm gonna say the best concordance that I've seen um, it, just in the back, you know, in the back of a Bible. This is still not a exhaustive concordance, but this thing is huge. There's more than 300 pages here. And you know what? The layout is one of the things that I love. That's for me why I'm calling it one of the best concordances I've seen. Just because the way they laid it out, the, the, the words that you're looking up, how the verses that go with those words are set in here, um, the boldness, even on the video as far away as it is now, you can see all the words, right? All the bold words there, those are the words you're looking up. And there's uh, quite a bit more information, um, or not information, that's the wrong word, quite a bit more verses per word than you get in a typical uh, concordance in the back of a Bible. So nice job on that, Mr. M Dr. Moeller and Zondervan. I don't know how much, all right, how much he had to do with the concordance, but man, over 300 pages, it's huge. Here's our note regarding the typeset in 2K Denmark. And then we get to Zondervan's maps in the back here. Um, I am a visual guy. I love, I love maps. I love when they do a good job and I can see things. And most maps these days I've been pleasantly surprised with. Um, I guess one of the only constructive criticisms that I would have would be give me more. Give me more visual helps and maps and because uh, I'm a visual guy and I like that kind of stuff. But even though I'm colorblind, I can see the difference between all these colors. I can see the routes, um, you know, and all the little helps that it has here uh, as far as what the heck these things actually are and why they're in the map. And that's it. So you get one page. This is just the back of the liner, kind of the liner page that you could take some notes if you wanted to. But this is a really beautiful Bible. I, again, I'm, I'm really glad that I got to show this to you. This is a solid resource. I really like Al Mohler and think that you should check his podcast out. I want to say thank you to Zondervan um, for sending me this Bible so I can review it and show you what quality tools and resources are out there to help make your day-to-day -day better and more Christ-focused. As always, if you have any questions, leave them down there in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them if there's something I didn't cover uh, or whatnot. I'll do my best to answer them with uh, the information that I have. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, thank you guys for coming by. I hope I've earned the privilege of your time. We have a couple more great videos coming out real soon. The NKJV uh, Interleaved Journaling Edition, Interleaved Bible Journaling Edition is brand new. You're going to want to see this. And also the NKJV Journal the Word Bible. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Again, thank you so much for watching. Here's a couple other videos you might be interested in. And don't forget, be who you claim to be.